So as I mentioned in an earlier video, my wife and I are camping in Kujipaquak National Park, New Brunswick, Canada, and we've been here for two weeks. And the site that we chosen has no electrical service. There are sites here that do have electrical service, but we like the pr more primitive sites where we can just set up our, our rather large tent. I'll show you that at another time. And where there's, we have quite a bit of privacy from our neighbors and from the roadway. But that means that we have no means of recharging our devices. So I had to come up with something that would keep, the, keep all our devices charged up. And I thought you might be interested in seeing that. If you are, stay tuned. Okay, so before I show you the charging system that I put together, let me show you what type of things that need to be recharged. So because there is no power at our site, both Gina and I rely on flashlights in the evening time. One for getting around the camp, but also for reading, which we like to do a lot of while we're here. So Gina's choices are two little flashlights. This one is a double A flashlight, uh, Ultrafire brand, some very inexpensive one that I, uh, I purchased on eBay. And uh, that works quite well for her. And the other one is a cool little device. I picked up a couple of these. These were also very inexpensive. And they are a USB charged device. So you can plug it right into a USB uh, port at home or in your car or in the system that I'm about to show you for recharging. And they're just great for sitting and reading at night. Now for me, I have a little different setup. I have a larger flashlight. And this one is also uh, from China. It's not a through night or any of the other known brain, uh, brand names. This one is Aleto, but it, uh, and I don't think it, well, I'm sure it doesn't have the quality the other ones have, but the price was definitely there and it was gave me something to play with. I don't think I would count on this necessarily in a survival situation, but it does seem to be waterproof. It has O-rings both where the battery compartment is as well as where the LED end of things are. And uh, so far it stood up for the last three or four years so it's it hasn't been a bad choice but this flashlight will use an 18650 battery so I have an 18650 battery that I have to charge I have double A batteries that I need to charge for the small flight flashlight that Gina has and I also have a Petzl headlamp and this is the lamp I like to use most when I'm reading it just leaves me hands free and uh, then it also has the red mode so when I'm moving around at night I don't lose my night vision and this is the tech the Petzl Tika Plus 2 model and I was given this a few years ago as a Christmas gift from my daughter and absolutely love it great little headlamp for all the new headlamps that are available on the market you still can't beat these I don't I don't doubt that it's not as durable as a through night and it certainly doesn't have the the um, lumens that the through night has but at I think this is either 80 or 110 lumens more than enough for getting around camp even hiking through the woods it would be nice to have a little bit more for hiking through the woods but for working around camp getting a fire started or reading it is just perfect and it's very lightweight on the head as well and that needs AAA batteries. So those are three batteries I need, I need to be able to charge. I also have my, my primary recording device for videos is my Canon video camera. So it has batteries of its own. I have two batteries for that. So I always have one charged. And cell phone. Now, we don't have good cell phone service here, so this isn't used much as a communication device so much as it is a camera. But occasionally we do need to call home just to let uh, people know that we're all, all okay and get in touch. So we can just go, drive out or walk out to where there's better cell service. So I do need to keep my cell phone uh, charged up as well. And new to me this year is my Samsung tablet. I don't think I would have brought this with me because uh, there's not a lot of good Wi-Fi spots here. There's literally one open Wi-Fi spot here in the park. And I normally wouldn't have brought this with me, but where I am trying to manage my YouTube channel and I need to release videos, uh, at least on a semi-regular basis, then I, um, uh, I brought the tablet for that purpose. And it does allow us to check the weather, make plans for the next day, and uh, it's easier for staying in touch as far as email writing than the phone is. So that's an extra device. A luxury item for sure, but it's something I brought with me. So those are the devices I need to keep charged up. So what about charging them? How do I go about charging these devices? All right, let me show you that. So Gina and I have been camping here at Coosber Quack National Park for a number of years. Actually, we started when our children were quite young, and as they grew up and moved on to their own lives, we just continued to come back. Sold our tent trailer, bought a good-sized tent, kind of a luxury item, 
but uh, very comfortable and very nice to have, especially when those rainy days occur. And we've learned over the years where the best two week period is, is likely to occur. So it's the last week of July and the first week of August for us. And we actually do pretty good most years. We hit at least 80 or 90% sunny days. We've had some rain here on occasions and we, pl we plan for that and we have alternative activities we can do for it. But for the most part, we have nice sunny days. And that sunshine provides me the alternative to use that solar energy to charge my batteries. So let me show you the solar system I've come up with for charging all those devices I just showed you. Stay tuned. Okay, at the heart of my solar charging system, of course, is my solar charging panel. So this is a four-year-old system, so don't consider this state-of-the-art by any means. There's, there are systems, even by this company, that are much more advanced than they were when I bought this. So after having watched a number of reviews, I was given a gift card to use with Amazon, and I did, this is what I decided to buy with it. So for the solar charging panel, I have the Anchor 14 watt solar panel. So it includes four separate panels. And as you see, it does fold up quite compact and stores away nicely. So not a full review, more of it just a, an idea of what my system is all about. You can see there are large grommets, two on this end down here, two up here that can be used to either string this up, maybe if you're hiking and you want to put it on your backpack, uh, put it in your canoe. I'd be a little cautious about getting this wet. It hasn't been in the rain, but it has been a little damp and it hasn't had a problem yet, but uh, I think it just makes sense to keep it from getting wet. So the four panels work together nicely. The charging ports are USB right in here. And there are two USB ports, and they use what's called IQ technology. Now, I will put a little bit more information on the screen about that, but my understanding is, is that the technology inside of this, these ports will automatically detect what type of device you're plugging into it, be it a tablet, a phone, or a battery charger, which I'll show you in a second, and it will allow it to uh, adapt to that charging system and give it the proper amperage for charging. So it works out pretty good. There are only the two ports there. There is a pocket for putting things like USB cables in. I also keep a silica gel packet in there just to keep everything dry. I will tell you this, I was a little disappointed with this part of the device when I first got it in that this pocket was just open. There was no way to keep this pocket closed. So I ended up gluing Velcro along the inside here. There was one little Velcro strip that was already there, but I found that anything that I put in here was falling out and I needed to add it Velcro to that. So I know that there are other systems that have zippers here or full length Velcro, and I would suggest taking a good look at those. I'm hoping even now that Anchor has updated their, their battery or their charging panels to have a closed pocket there and the pocket is vitally important for keeping the small things like your USB cables which you need a few of for this system. Um, I will tell you this as well I like the size of this panel I like the way it packs I like the way it works it does charge but it is no speed demon it will take you quite a bit of time to charge any of your devices now there's a number of factors that go into that you want to have full sunlight directly on these panels for the longest period of time. Uh, keep the panels clean, nothing in between the panels and the sun, and you'll get their maximum efficiency out of it. In addition, I've, I've read this online as well as my own experiences. When you're charging something, it will charge fastest from an empty state, but as it gets close to the 80 or 90 percent full, the charging slows down. So it's like waiting for that last little bit of charge to occur that seems to take the longest. Now, you don't have to have full sunshine for no, in order for this work. It is obviously the best. This will work in a cloudy day. It will work in, a, in an overcast, but it's quite a bright day. It's just going to be a much more slow trickle charge for that. But you'll know if it's charging because your device will light up like it will, normally would if you plug it in. If it's not lighting up or you're not seeing the light come on in your device or your charging item, then it's not producing enough electricity to charge it. Okay, so that's a quick show of my solar panel. That's one of the two primary components of the system. And the other one is the battery bank. So this is the Anchor 18 or excuse me, the Anchor 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank. 
and this has been a great device for me and it does have four lights on it to show what the charge is and right now I don't know if they're showing up on the camera but this uh, item is fully charged it also has two output ports USB output ports that use the same IQ technology so that they will know what devices are being plugged into them and, and provide the, the appropriate amount of current it also has a micro USB port on the side for charging it up so the way I use these things in combination is during the day I charge this device up unless it's fully charged of course already but I'll charge this device up and that, can use, that leads me to use my phone and my tablet and the like during the day. And then once this is fully charged, at night I turn my phone and my tablet off and plug them into this device and let them charge up overnight. And this does an amazingly quick job of charging my phone and my tablet. But those aren't the only things I want to charge here. So in addition to charging the other devices I'll show you in one second, I like to use this, uh, keep this as topped up as I possibly can because you never know when you're going to get that cloudy day. So right now it's fully charged and I don't have to put any more charge on it. So today so far I have been charging my devices that need charging uh, using the solar panel and going directly to the device rather than charging this and then going to the device. So let me set that aside. A few years ago I was looking for a universal charger that I could use for charging all the types of batteries you've seen. So something for the 18650, the AA and the AAA and this is what I came up with. It's only a two port, it'll only take two batteries at a time but I found this on eBay and uh, there are some commercially branded models that are identical to this and this one does not have a branding on it at all. So I took a chance to get it and I could not be happier with it quite honestly. It's, it has turned out to be just fantastic. It has has an LED readout right here and it's for charging lithium ion so it will charge nickel cadmium but you just can't charge trust that it's uh, reading it properly because it's meant for lithium ion batteries and the two uh, charging ports will work independently of each other the first thing it does is assess the current state of the battery it'll tell you exactly how much current is in the battery and what the voltage is and uh, then it will start flashing lights to indicate about how long it's going to take to charge them independently when they are full the the um, LED will read exactly that full so you can take that battery out even if the other one's not fully charged yet and put another battery in and just keep swapping batteries out until they're all full it also I've found is will tell you when a battery is not working properly and it will say fail so if for whatever reason you have a bad battery or it's incompatible with this device which really uh, none of my batteries are incompatible um, it will tell me if it's going to fail so this has been ideal and with that I have a number of USB cables here but uh, just a small USB so it inputs or outputs excuse me it outputs with a micro USB and, or sorry, inputs with a micro USB and I e can charge it either directly to the solar panel or to the battery pack into this device, which is great for, the, for, for having this in the field, but I can also use this at home because it does also come with a USB adapter for plugging into uh, a household current. Now what's interesting, it came with a, with a universal adapter, in other words this could be used in multiple countries, so it has the more Euro uh, European style double prong and then the flat plug style which just go together and I can plug that into the wall and then there's a USB outlet port right here that allows me to run from the cable from my wall plug into this device and charge my batteries at home. All right, so that's the USB system. So this has worked great for everything that I've had up until this year. And this year, I needed to find some way of charging my Canon batteries. And I have two batteries for my Canon video camera that I'm recording with right now. So I went online, and this was not as easy to find, at least not from eBay. Because, quite honest, if you're buying a, a factory-branded Canon product, you're paying an exorbitant price. And I just couldn't justify that, considering that the, even the camera I have is second hand. I didn't want to pay more for the batteries and, and the uh, charging device than I did for the camera itself. So right now I have an extended life battery on the camera. This is the standard Canon, uh, what's this one? BP718, that's the number, and the one I have on the camera right now is the extended life battery. So those are the two batteries I use for this camera. And uh, the, the extended life one is one I picked up on eBay for an exceptionally good price, less than a quarter of what you would pay for it new in the store under the Canon brand name. And the device I found 
is specifically designed for Canon batteries. And I virtually paid, I think, a dollar, maybe two dollars for this on eBay. So my Canon battery will slide right into the charging port. A USB cable, micro USB input on one end of it. Regular USB that I can plug either directly into my solar panel or directly into the power bank. So those are the devices and the system I've come up with for the devices and that need charging that I have. Okay, so that's my solar charging system I use when I go camping. I've used it primarily for car camping, but I could take it if I was going for more than a couple of days backpacking as well, because at its heart, the solar charging panel and the battery bank are enough to keep me in power for a number of days. Now, when I first started using this, primarily it was my telephone, and my uh, flashlights that I was charging. I wasn't charging the batteries for the camera or the, the, the tablet as well. So I'm probably at the limit of what I can accomplish with this system. It might be better to go to a larger battery bank to reserve and hold more power, as well as a larger solar panel to get a little bit more power into that battery bank. If I was gonna keep this or add even more additional devices to it, I may consider that. But for me, this system's working just fine right now. So I'd be interested in knowing about your solar charging system or whatever type of charging system you're using with your devices when you go out for an extended period of time. If you found this video interesting, maybe you'll consider subscribing to my channel. But in the meantime, get out and explore. We're about to go to the beach and I'm going to have to show you some video of the beaches here in Kujba Quack because they are just simply amazing. But wherever you go, do get out and explore. Find that path and that path less traveled and take it. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.